Let's look at how to properly read and use a lens depth of field scale to dial in focus, uh, figure out what aperture you need, and also implement hyperfocal distance. So this will work on any lens or camera, old or new, as long as the lens has a built-in depth of field scale and distance markings on the barrel. Like I have a bunch of lenses and cameras up here. Some have it, some don't. On my old Minolta, the 50 millimeter lens attached has a clearly defined depth of field scale and uh, distance markings on the lens. My Mamiya 645 Pro, both lenses have it. But even my modern lenses for my Canon digital camera, some ha have it, some don't. My uh, 24 millimeter tilt shift has it, which is nice because this is a manual focus only lens. But even my autofocus 28 millimeter has it. My uh, 40 millimeter pancake does not. Also, my 70 to 200 doesn't, and neither of the lenses for my Fuji digital camera have it. So uh, this will only work on lenses that have a depth of field scale built in. Now we're gonna look at uh, different techniques to make use of this depth of field scale. The first one we're gonna look at will only work on SLRs, TLRs, and rangefinder cameras. In other words, cameras where you can tell visually where the lens is focused. Um, on a rangefinder, it's done with the split image, but of course on an SLR or TLR, it's just done visually by looking at the image through the viewfinder. There's gonna be a different technique we have to look at for cameras that have a viewfinder, but no rangefinder. And so I need to clear up the difference between viewfinder and rangefinder. Uh, because these terms often get used interchangeably and they're definitely not the same thing. So a viewfinder is a window, quote unquote window, I know it's kind of a weird term to use, but it's a window built into a camera that allows you to judge framing and composition. Not necessarily focus though. A rangefinder on the other hand is specifically for focus. And that's usually a split image that you have to line up two split images to one to uh, focus the lens. So some cameras have a viewfinder but no rangefinder. Uh, some cameras have both combined into one. Uh, for instance, my uh, Minolta SLR, my Mamiya 645 Pro, um, you're looking through the same window for composition and focus. It's just one viewfinder. But if we look at like my Polaroid LAN camera here, which uses a uh, old pack film, there's two separate windows. Uh, one is the rangefinder, one is the viewfinder. So you start by looking through the rangefinder and you adjust your focus that way with a split image. And then once you've achieved focus, you move over to the viewfinder to adjust your composition and take the photo. My Fuji GA645ZI is kind of a weird one because this had, most people would call this a rangefinder camera, but I don't think it's technically a rangefinder because the window that I look through doesn't have a split image or any way to visually just adjust focus or gauge focus. This is an autofocus camera. So Fuji basically decided, well, we have an autofocus system in here. It'll take care of focus for you. So you don't need a split image rangefinder to adjust focus. We got it. It gets it right a solid 65 to 70% of the time. But um, that I don't think is a rangefinder because uh, it's only a viewfinder camera because I just do composition through there. I don't adjust focus through that window. Uh, and a common camera where you'd run into, uh, it has a viewfinder, but no way to visually gauge focus, would be like a six by 17 external viewfinder panoramic camera. So that'd be like a Fuji uh, G617 or a Linhoff Technorama. One of those where you look through a window to judge composition, but there's no way to know visually where the lens is focused. Those are dependent entirely on the distance markings on the lens. So it's gonna be a little bit different technique for, um, for those types of cameras. But let's start with the cameras where you can actually visually tell where the lens is focused. And uh, let's start with the most basic of basics, which is how to actually read this depth of field scale. So on my Minolta here, let's say I'm planning on taking a picture at f16, and let's say my lens happens to be focused right about here. Well, I can see, according to my depth of field scale, that I'm gonna get a depth of field from seven feet, actually just shy of that, six point something, all the way to 30 feet. That's gonna be the acceptable uh, areas of focus in my image. If I were to instead focus 
uh, right here, still using F16, my depth of field is going to be four foot to seven foot. So you can see they're very simple to read. They're just telling you near to far how much of the image is going to be in focus. So um, that's one way to use the depth of field scale, just seeing how much you're going to get in focus. But uh, let's take it a step further. Let's um, use the depth of field to guide us on where to focus and what aperture to use. So for that, I'm going to use my uh, Mamiya 645 Pro TL here with the 80 millimeter lens. So here's how you do it. First, I would focus on the near point in my photo and note the distance on the lens. So let's say I focus on my nearest subject, the nearest point of my desired depth of field, and I look at my lens and I see that I'm focused 10 feet away. So I'm going to make a mental note of that, 10 feet. Now I'm going to focus on the furthest point of my desired depth of field. I look at my lens again. I see that it's at 30 feet. So 10 feet to 30 feet. Now I'm going to adjust the focus on my lens halfway between those two points. Not halfway in terms of distance. I'm not going to put it at 20 feet. I'm going to put it halfway between those two points on the lens. So that's going to be right about here happens to be uh, 15 feet in this case. So now I'm focused perfectly for my desired depth of field. And I'm going to look at my depth of field scale and see what aperture I should use. And I see that 10 feet is lined up with about f11. 30 feet is lined up with about f11. So I need to use f11. Now this technique would be exactly the same even if uh, your far point is infinity. So let's say for example I uh, focus on my near point, and I see that it's 10 feet. Then I focus on my far point, I see that it's infinity. And again, I'm just going to split those two points on my lens here, so that they're equidistant between the middle point. And I see now, 10 feet to infinity, I have to use f16, and I have to focus a little beyond 15 feet. That, by the way, is hyperfocal distance which we're going to talk about more in just a minute. Now, this technique is going to be no different even if your near and far points don't line up with any obvious markings on the lens. So for instance, let's say my near point is right here, a little bit beyond 5 feet, and my far point is right here, a little bit beyond 7 feet. I'm still going to do the same thing. I'm just going to split those two points on the lens so that they're equidistant from the middle mark of the focusing scale. And I can see now that I'm going to have to use f11. Now this is real easy to apply as you can see on uh, lenses that use helical focusing. So that's these types of lenses where when you rotate the the ring the lens uh, goes in and out. It's called helical because helical comes from helix and there's a helix shaped mechanism in there that uh, causes that to happen. But some cameras don't have helical mechanisms, like Mamma Mia C220. Focus is achieved by adjusting the uh, dial on the side. It can still be applied on this, uh, which is kind of cool. Because you see on the other side of the camera, there's a distance scale uh, with a bunch of lines here indicating different lenses. So here's how this would work. So I would first, again, focus on my near point. Then I would look at the side of the camera and I would have to find the line for the lens I'm using. So I'm using a 105 millimeter lens. Um, I'm going to find that line there. And when I focus on the near point, I see that uh, the line intersects the camera right at six feet. Uh, so that's my near point. Now I'm going to focus on my far point. And then again, I'm going to see where the line intersects the camera. It looks like it's right about, I guess, eight feet, uh, probably about right. So six feet to eight feet. Now if I go to my top lens here, I have this... Uh, focusing ring, but this actually isn't adjusting focus at all. It's purely to make use of the depth of field scale. So I'm going to take 6 foot and 8 foot and place them equidistant from the center point of the focusing scale. And I see that I need to focus a little bit shy of 7 feet, and I see too that I have to use f11. So I'm going to go down to my lens, dial in f11 on the lower lens because that's the picture taking lens. And I'm going to adjust the focus to just shy of 7 feet. So I have to remember to do that step. I look at the side of the camera and I adjust it until the black line intersects just shy of 7 feet. 
One step further I could, uh, I could do here is, you'll see the top lens has its own aperture setting. Again, this is not for the photo. This is purely for your own visual reference. If I set this to f11, I can look through my viewfinder and preview my depth of field. So that's how you preview depth of field on TLRs. The world famous RZ67 has a similar system. So let's say my RZ67 with my 110 millimeter lens, I would uh, first focus on the near point, then I would look at the distance scale on the side. And I would have to find the line for my lens. Uh, I'm using 110, so it would be this red line right here, so that's the one I gotta pay attention to. On the near point, I see that it intersects right at four feet. So that's my near point, four feet. Now I'm gonna focus on the far point. And again, I'm gonna look at the side and see where that line intersects the camera. And it's just beyond 6.6 .6 feet. I'm gonna say it's seven feet. So four feet to seven feet. Now I'm gonna go up to the lens and you'll see there's this ring around the lens. If you have an RZ67, you may have wondered about this kind of funky ring. It doesn't affect focus, it can rotate endlessly. So this is for using the depth of field scale. My near point was four feet, far point seven feet. So I'm gonna split the difference of those two. And I see that I have to use F32 and I have to focus at five feet. So I'm gonna put in F32 and I'm gonna look at the side of the camera while I adjust focus to five feet. And now I'm focused optimally and uh, my aperture is set for the depth field I want. And by the way, this uh, blue ring that rotates around, you'll feel a click on it. That's so you can switch between meters and feet. Um, it's kind of a cool feature. So this uh, whole technique for adjusting focus can be applied on all sorts of cameras. But what happens when it's a camera that uh, doesn't have a rangefinder and there's no way to visually check the focus? So like on a 6x17 external viewfinder style camera. Well, if we can't visually check the focus, how are we gonna know our near and far points? Well, one way is we could estimate, you know, we could look and be like, well, that's probably, I don't know, five feet away and that's probably 60 feet away. Good luck with that. People suck at estimating distances, myself included. Another option is you could carry one of these. This is a range finder. Um, these are used for hunting and sport shooting and golf. Um, but this, you point at something, you press the button, and uh, it'll tell you how far away it is. So uh, you could use that to dial in the near and far points on one of those cameras where you can't visually check focus. But on those types of cameras, you're probably best just dialing in hyperfocal distance. And the hyperfocal distance, uh, if you go researching that online, it can seem way more complicated than it is. Hyperfocal distance is actually super simple. Um, first, let me explain what hyperfocal distance is, and then we'll look at how to do it. So hyperfocal distance, if you've achieved hyperfocal distance on your lens, that means you're focused at the perfect spot to maximize your depth of field right to infinity, but not any further. So in other words, you're not wasting any depth of field into infinity. And then the near point, of course, will be dictated by what aperture you choose. So the hyperfocal distance will vary depending on uh, what lens focal length you're using, what aperture you're planning on using. But um, that's quite useful for cameras like 6x17 cameras because often with those types of photos, you're trying to get a full depth of field all the way to infinity. So just dialing in hyperfocal distance is probably what you're gonna to wanna to do more often than not. So here's how you would dial in hyperfocal distance on any camera, including a 6x17 viewfinder style camera. Basically, you would just put the infinity mark at the aperture you wanna use. So on my Minolta here, if I'm gonna use f22, I would just put the infinity mark at f22. I am now dialed in perfectly for hyperfocal distance at f22. And then I can check how close is the near point of my depth of field? And it looks to be about six feet. So I know that if I use F22 focused at this distance, I'm gonna have a depth of field from six feet to infinity. 
So that's what you would do on like a 6x17 uh, viewfinder style camera. You just figure out what aperture you want to use, uh, put the infinity mark at that aperture, see what the near point is. If you're not happy with that near point, you might need to use a different aperture and readjust things. Um, but hyperfocal distance, super easy to dial in and can be really helpful if you're doing uh, landscapes and architecture and scenery type stuff where you want a huge depth of field. Now, by the way, you'll notice on this example that the near point of 6 feet is half the hyperfocal distance of about 12 feet. And it seems every resource online and any hyperfocal calculator will say this is always the case, that the near point will be half the hyperfocal distance. Now, I'm not an engineer, so I'm not going to say that that's wrong or right, but I will say that this doesn't jive with all of my lenses depth of field scales. Like on my RZ67's 50 millimeter, the hyperfocal distance for f32 is at three and a half feet, but the near point is lined up beyond two feet. Same for my RZ's 75 millimeter. The hyperfocal for f22 is showing 10 feet, and yet the near point is more like five and a half feet. Make of that what you will, but these are the numbers I go by rather than the simple formulas because personally, I tend to put more faith in the team of engineers that design these lenses and most certainly ran endless resolution tests at every aperture to come up with these scales you know, before they sold them to the public. Now, a couple final things I wanna point out. Some lenses, the infinity mark will actually have some, uh, some movement in it. Like it's not one clearly defined line, it's actually a a distance. So like on my Canon here, you can see like that's infinity, but that's also infinity, that's infinity, that's infinity. It's all infinity along that line. The lens is designed that way to accommodate changes in temperature in the lens that cause the mechanisms to expand and contract and ends up moving infinity off of what it normally is. So in very cold weather, infinity might be here, where in normal kind of warm weather, infinity might be here. So how do you know exactly where the infinity mark is then? Well, it's real simple. Just in whatever environment you're in, whatever temperature you're in, just focus on something really far away and then see where the infinity mark is. And that's infinity at that moment in that temperature. So uh, nothing too scary. It's just uh, some of the modern lenses, they build in some uh, cushion to accommodate for temperature changes. Now the final thing I want to say is uh, these depth of field scales do not factor in the blow up size of the image and how much lack of sharpness bothers you. You know, if you're breaking it out on the light table and using a 20x loop, you're probably going to be much more critical about, oh, the near point wasn't fully in focus and the far point wasn't fully in focus. This depth of field scale stuff is complete BS. It's not factoring that in. It's giving you a good starting point, good guideline. So make adjustments as necessary. If you do a lot of blow ups, if you're scanning at really high resolution, something like that, you may need to use apertures a little bit beyond what the depth of field scale tells you. But that's just gonna take experimentation to figure that out. All right, that's the depth of field scale and hyperfocal distance and all that fun stuff. If you found this video useful and you wanna support my channel, links in the description and uh, thanks for watching.